I greet you here at the second conference of the scientific youth, which has the topic of the future of Ukraine, and which the Ukrainian Room Club Association conducts together with the Kyiv International Economic Forum. You see that this year we've gathered in the new place, in a unique place, one of the best innovative parks of Europe, Unit City. By the way, in the evening, tonight, you'll have an opportunity to visit an excursion at the Innovative Campus. Before that, we'll have a very, very interesting and saturated agenda, so I do call for you. Please be very attentive up till the last moment. If you haven't done that, please uh, install the chatbot of Telegram, because there is a detailed agenda there, biographies of all of the speakers, and with the help of the chatbot, I do emphasize, you will be able to ask your questions to our esteemed speakers, and it will inform inform you about the further opportunities of yours. And also we'll have the interactive polls and surveys, and also it will be done through this tool. Moreover, we are planning to inform you about the further news and projects of the Ukrainian Room Club Association, so you will need this mechanism more than once. Our conference is totally unique, because first of all, it is committed to the three teams, economic politics, innovations and entrepreneurship, and your personal development. You can never find anything like that in Ukraine. We're doing that for the second time, and it becomes a nice tradition already. The conference is also unique because we have totally fantastic speakers today. The best intellectuals and the state officials, entrepreneurs from different countries and continents. And we even have one secret speaker, and you're not expecting for him for sure, but he'll have a speech tonight at 6 p.m. So I do advise you be very, very attentive. Dear friends, before lunch we are discussing what's the economic policy needed for Ukraine. After lunch, we'll, join, we'll be joined by the honorary president of the Club of Rome, Ernst Ulrich von Weizsäcker. We'll have his speech, and then, after that, we'll have a unique opportunity to sign the books of the author the report of the Club of Rome, which is devoted to the 50th anniversary of the Club of Rome. It's really the intellectual revolution which is going on now and which was called the New Enlightenment. After that, the executive director of the Kyiv International Economic Forum, Yuri Pivovaro, will moderate a super interesting panel with successful Ukrainian entrepreneurs. You'll be able to ask them questions, to hear their advice. I think it's a unique opportunity because you'll never meet those people outside, just in the street. You will never get such frank and sincere advice about how you can become successful in your life. And to implement your talents that much. Instantly after that, we'll have the secret speaker, whom I already mentioned, and the contest, with the result of which you'll, we will ha have an opportunity to win the tickets for the Ukrainian Association, the Club of Rome, and some of the money awards for the winners. And also, I'd like to thank our partners, thanks to whom we have this conference possible here, the economic future of Ukraine this year. This is Arcada Bank, Raiffeisen Bank Eval. This is the Corporation of Interpipe, Artinger, and Coca-Cola. Thank you, dear partners, who understand the importance of the Ukrainian youth and creation of better economy and better future of Ukraine. Dear colleagues, so we are beginning and now I do suggest you to see the video reel of the 
professor and um, the member of the Club of Rome, the main executive director of World Academy of Art and Science, the head of the Council of World University Consortium. Have a successful work and please watch. I'm Gary Jacobs, watch. chief executive officer of the World Academy of Art and Science. And I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to address you, members of the Young Scientists Conference, on this very important topic of the economic future of Ukraine. And I'm particularly pleased that the World Academy is a partner in uh, the organization of this conference. Today, the world faces unprecedented global challenges, economic challenges, social challenges, political challenges, ecological challenges, cultural challenges. And it's important for you to reflect and understand that what Ukraine is going through today is part of a wider process that began just 30 years ago with the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War and the collapse of communism and the transition of societies to democratic market economies. And it's important also to understand that today nobody has all the answers. Nobody has the perfect models for what Ukraine should do in future. This is a unique moment in history. In the last 30 years, globalization has expanded the uh, interactions and interdependencies between countries in a manner that was un un unexpected and un imaginable just 30 years ago. The way we communicate, the way we transport, the way we produce, the way we exchange is on an unprecedented scale. And that opens up unprecedented opportunities, but it also poses challenges. The challenges that come from the unknown. And one of the challenges we have is for our theoretical understanding to catch up with the rapid developments in the world. We need new theory. It's not enough simply to read the textbooks of what worked 30 or 20 or even 10 years ago and say, now, how do we apply that in Ukraine? Yes, of course, we can learn very good lessons from other countries that have made the transition before. We know the importance of getting the laws right. We know the importance of creating the right institutions of creating an environment which encourages uh, business, of providing people with the necessary productive skills, of making available capital for investment and openness of markets for exchange. But there's much more than that. For today, what we need to build is an economy for the future, an economy that includes everyone, not just a few of the wealthy, not just the 90% or the 99% who control the vast amount of the world's wealth. We need an economy that includes all. We need an economy that's sustainable, that doesn't rob and deplete the Earth's resources and essentially put the Earth up to sale uh, as if uh, everything has its price. Our Earth, our environment is priceless, precious resource and no economic calculation can properly reflect its value. So we need new thinking. And on top of all of this, we're in the midst of a process of globalization, but also the beginnings of the fourth industrial revolution, where technology is going to play a, more, a greater and greater role, both potentially for good and potentially as a challenge to the existing way of life. And we're going to have to rethink our concepts in such a way to ensure that as we develop and tap and utilize the benefits of emerging technology, we also ensure that ultimately those benefits are distributed to all, that the benefits reach everybody. Because in fact, nobody makes an exclusive invention. All inventions draw on the cumulative knowledge and skill and inventions of the past. It's the heritage that belongs to all humanity. And we have to be sure in future that those benefits are properly and fairly distributed to all humanity as well. Adjusting and adapting 
to this change is going to be very challenging for all of us. I'm an American, and it's very challenging for us in America, even though we've been at this for a much longer time. And we have to, that's going to require a radical change in our educational process. We can no longer hope to teach students the right answers that they can fill out on examination questions because we don't know the right answers today. The most important education we can give our youth today is to ask the right questions and to think independently and to come up with new solutions, to come up with new questions. And that's why this Young Scientists Conference that's why the contest that has brought you very talented, dynamic, innovative, originally thinking people together, that's what the world needs today, not only in Ukraine, but in the whole world. We have to go beyond the orthodoxies, whether they're economic or political, and find a way to create a better, fairer, safer, more peaceful world for all. You are the generation. We look to you to go beyond what has come before and to find the solutions to the questions that we are asking today. I have great confidence in the future of Ukraine. Whatever the difficulties it's going through, whatever the time it takes, whatever the mistakes, we all make difficulties, we all make mistakes, and we've all been through a lot. But this is a country not only with vast, rich resources, natural resources, but wonderful, talented human resources. And I'm so happy that the conference organizers are trying to recognize the central importance of human beings. Economists call it human capital, but we're much more than that. It's not just our skills that are important. It's not just our knowledge that's important. It's our aspirations. It's our hopes. It's our faith. And most of all, it's our values. I'm a business consultant, and I work with successful companies all over the world. And I have found the clearest, simplest, most reliable index of sustainable prosperity and accomplishment are high values. Our whole civilization is based on those values. And where they're wanting, let's meet them, let's provide them. Where they're lower, let's make them higher. And I'm very sure that Ukraine, with your talents, with your aspiration, with your energy, with your resources, if you follow that path to raise the values in everything that you do, individually, as a community, as a nation, Ukraine's going to emerge as a leader in the years to come. And please remember, the last to start is never the last to finish. All that have come before and built empires in the past or achieved prosperity in the past have been superseded by those who come after them. So just because you're starting later than some doesn't mean that you're going to remain behind. Rather, history shows that you have the greatest opportunities to overcome the mistakes that we've made, to overcome the problems we've made, and to show the way for the future, to create the models for the future. Just as Silicon Valley and the IT revolution have created new models that weren't there during the traditional first and second industrial revolution. So I wish you success. I look forward to hearing about the wonderful ideas, innovations that you're coming up with. And more to see the contribution that you can make to Ukraine and the world in the future. Thank you.